So welcome to Foxy Copy. This uh, channel is going to be uh, talking about uh, art and words and pictures and comics and illustration and fine art and just a kind of mix of the different things that I'm into. Uh, it's a direct uh, reaction to cartoonist kayfabe, um, uh, which is a, a podcast a channel thing uh, being done by Ed Piscor and uh, Jim Rugg right now. Two uh, cartoonists, comic book artists coming out of uh, Pittsburgh, um, and it, it's it's really great what they're doing, um, kind of analyzing all different kinds of comics that were important to them as kids uh, growing up. But let's go back just real quick and look at the the ads that are in this uh, comic book. You know, so you have so you have mask. Becoming professionals in this in this field. So today I, I, I want to talk about uh, Sergio Aragones. Let's get right to it. I want you to meet Sergio Aragones. Hiya, Sergio. Great having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now it's up to you. I can relax and have a good time. Uh, somebody who they brought up in in their first episode of uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe. Um, and it just kind of piqued my interest. And since I've become a documentary filmmaker, uh, as soon as I remember something or realize uh, that something is you know a topic of interest or a person who I might have really liked at one point but then forgotten um, I always want to like kind of track them down and find out more about who they really were you know what they're up to now and all that kind of stuff so uh, and then I try to convince people to to let me make a documentary uh, about this, that subject um, which is, is not always that easy. So here we have uh, Sergio Aragones' uh, um, uh, margin drawing in the pages of Mad Magazine, uh, which is how I first um, found out about his, his work. Are Patriotical. you the one who started those marginals? Was that your idea to do them? I'm I sure you all, know, you all know what we're <clears throat> talking about. Sergio does these little drawings in the margins of Mad Magazine, which are known all over the world. Did they tell you to do that, or did no, you no, suggest no, no. that? I, I suggested it. Really? That. What they had yeah. on the old mats, there were little signs uh -huh. related to movies. They were very clever. But every time I asked uh, or Nick or Jerry the Fuji, the editors, uh, Nick Meglin, I asked them what it means. He says, well, did you see that movie? And I says, no. Well, then it won't make any sense to you. And then I will point another one. You, but, uh, it were puns on words that, that they were very uh, old and they uh -huh. didn't make any uh -huh. sense. So I asked them, why don't we make drawings? And they told me it couldn't be possible to have pantomime cartoons so small without any words. So I says, yes, no. So I did it. <laughs> I said, well, we run them until you run out of ideas. And so far, it's been 30 years, <laughs> every issue without missing one. And it's funny because even my, you know, my wife, who's uh, French, I'm, I'm doing this over here in Paris. Well, I was born in Spain, mm -hmm. and that was during the Spanish Civil War. So my family emigrated first to France. I went to school there. You speak French too, don't yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, she, she loved his drawings um, growing up, and she was never, you know, really, I wouldn't call her a big comics fan, but it just kind of shows you how his work um, was able to travel through Mad Magazine and just lots of kind of zany, you know, zany, um, weird little uh, appearances in, in probably publications, you know, that, were, that came out all over the world. From France, we went to Mexico. Mm -hmm. and when I arrived to Mexico, I didn't spoke any Spanish. So being afraid of going out with the kids, I stayed a lot at home. Well, how old um, were you then? Uh, four, four or five. Uh -huh. And then I, when you are alone at home, you, you draw and you tell yourself stories. And uh, I think uh, when my earliest recollections has been a paper on pen and ink. <laughs> I was always drawing all the time. So this came out in the 80s uh, when maybe the concept of terrorism was viewed with a little more distance and humor. Um, it's kind of funny when you look back so much uh, at things that are comical, uh, the amount of, of topics that are less and less, you know, um, considered uh, uh, appropriate for, for comedy. Anyway, you, so you see uh, Aragonis' you know, quick style of, of cartooning here. 
it's interesting to talk about Reagan in the 80s um, and this channel, which I'm going to call uh, Foxy Copy. So Foxy Copy is uh, is an homage to uh, to a Xerox store that was down the street from the from the comic book store, Big Apple Comics. Uh, that in uh, when I was 12 years old, I was uh, given a, a part time job after school at the local comic store. And it was basically the adults who ran it were being nice to me uh, because I was so into into the comics. And but I did kind of impress them because I walked in with um, a sketchbook it was uh, Xeroxes photocopies of a sketchbook by Bernie Wrightson, uh, the famous Swamp Thing Frankenstein uh, artist, uh, comics artist. And I had these Xeroxes of his actual um, uh, sketchbook that I got from. Um, from a, a comic book artist named Ken Lengraf, uh, who uh, whose Saturday morning uh, uh, comic book class I ended up attending because I took a night class with him when I was around 10 or 11 in New York City, and I was the only kid there, and it was absolutely fascinating, mind-blowing experience uh, in which uh, all the adults got around and talked about comic books and just artistic ideas in a way that uh, you wouldn't normally do around a kid. So I was really lucky to, 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 my father found that class and through like a, an ad in the personals or some, something like that in the back of some magazine. Um, anyway, he, he would, he had these Xeroxes of like all of these, you know, important, uh, comic book artists, uh, from the, from the seventies, uh, Gil Kane, uh, I don't know, Neil Adams, people, you know, who were considered stars. He had, he had their, um, their sketchbooks. And so I would, he would let me Xerox them. And I walked into this comic book store on the Upper West Side and I showed the owner, Pete Koch, who, who also traded original art. I showed him, uh, I showed him the, the, those, those Xeroxes and he sent me out directly to Foxy Copy, the local, uh, the local copy shop just a few blocks away asked me to copy them when I came back I asked him if I could have a job and he said yes so this channel is called foxy copy because I'm also kind of copying cartoonist kayfabe uh, but it's out of uh, respect and adoration because I love that thing I'm just watching it all the time <laughs> but another thing is I want to bring up is uh, just copying in general because it's something that artists do all the time something that I did all the time I still do all the time uh, but especially as a kid uh, you know starting to draw I, I, I probably I'm sure I copied this cover you know you, you copy poses you, you you try to understand how people draw and so you know because Ed Pisker and Jim Rugg um, and Tom Scioli if that's right uh, there's like this group of, of comic artists coming out of Pittsburgh who have this, you know, each have an uh, uh, individual style, but there's something to me that uh, nostalgia that unites these guys. And um, nostalgia, when you reproduce it, is often, uh, you know, a kind of copying and like hearkening back to something from before. And somebody else from Pittsburgh is uh, Andy Warhol, an uh, uh, American artist who made a bit of an impact. You may have heard of him. Well, I, I don't believe in painting because I hate objects, and uh, uh, I, I hate to go to museums and see pictures of the world because they look so important and they don't really mean anything. And I have this really cool book of, uh, it's actually one of his sketchbooks that I thought I'd show you. Um, and what it is, is just, it's him tracing photos. And it's funny because when you trace photos, <laughs> you you know these are probably like commissions or something but when you trace photos you get a kind of line it's like everybody can have that line you know it, you trace photos and that's kind of what happens you know the hair the the highlights the the, the in comics that you put x's all over the place showing where you're going to put blacks and whatnot and uh it's kind of funny because his uh style of drawing um is is a kind of style that almost anyone can have uh, and I think he knew that I don't know if it's because of what I know about Andy Warhol and you know the atmosphere in which these these uh, drawings were being produced but there's something kind of foxy about it all to me this is like sitting um, uh, at the World's Fair and you're riding one of those Ford machines where the voice is behind you it's so exciting you don't have to think anything 
But you should just tell me the words and I can just repeat them because I can't. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, I can't. I'm, I can't. I'm so empty today. I can't think of anything. Yet a kind of inhumanity, a kind of. Uh, there's Mick. A kind of, uh, you know, um, surface quality um, and uh, robotic reproduction nature, which I think Andy Warhol would have been very happy with as a, you know, an analysis of his work. So it's funny that you've got, you know, Reagan, because, uh, I mean, who's more of a Reagan artist in a way than, than uh, Andy Warhol? So let's see, let's, let's, uh, let's head back to, uh, to Gru territory. And uh, let's talk, let's talk uh, Sergio Aragonis here for a little bit. Listen, Sergio, you know, so many, for so many years, people have said what a fast artist you are. Are you really that fast? Let, give a demonstration uh, of how fast you draw. For instance, if I had to draw a... Oh, wow. Hey, oh my. See, you have Look to draw like at that. That. See, that's how a, a serious oh, guy have to draw, you know. Sure. But in a now <laughs> let's stop kidding around, huh? <laughs> no, no. A, a serious artist would draw like this if I had to draw. Now. <laughs> See, this this would. What's pressure. what's taking you so long? <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's just generic cartoon, you know. I mean, Son like, of a gun. Well, the, the difference is when, when an artist th that draws the serious comics draws, uh -huh. say, a hand. Uh -huh. Well, the hand has to look like a hand. The guy has to study anatomy, and the hand has to have certain proportions, you know. Right. But when you draw in a cartoon hand, this is a hand. Yeah. It's one of the first comics that I, I ever bought, and I, I just grew up loving. Um, I think I got my first copy of this uh, in second grade. No, maybe third or fourth grade. My friend Eddie Ruiz. Hi, Eddie. Uh, uh, showed it to me and I immediately fell in love. You know the awful thing about what you're doing, people are going to be watching you and they're going to go running to their desk and taking a magic marker and figuring, Jesus, I never realized I can draw like that. Yes. I mean, it's easy and they'll try it. Absolutely. And they're going to get frustrated as possible. Well, it comes, as I said before, with practice. It's like playing the piano. Uh -huh. the, the, uh, the analogy is you want to play the piano, if you sit on a piano, what's going to happen? You go clink, 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 and nothing happens. You practice eight hours a day, four hours a day, two hours a day. The more you practice, the better you become. Same thing with drawing. You sit on your piece of paper, you draw. You know, I don't know, there's something about little things, like tiny little drawings, when you're little yourself, that are kind of, you know, extra satisfying. And they almost seem like they're made just for you. But let's go back just real quick and look at the the ads that are in this uh, comic book. You know, so you have so you have mask. I love that toy. I never really knew much about it. It was kind of more mysterious, maybe because it was called mask. than um, Transformers or GoBots or things like that, but it was in the same sort of universe. I'll see something you notice is that there are a lot of um, sort of big breasted or women with their breasts pushed up, uh, uh, girlies in the, you know, serving drinks to all these disgusting men. Listen, I just thought of something. You have not yet drawn a female for us here, have you? And the whole world is waiting to see what an Aragonis female looks like. Well, and there are many types of them, I know. The, this, the, the, the females are anything you want. I mean, it could be a, a female like this, you know, which is more in in, in, in the style of a, of, a, of, of a cartoon female. You know? Uh huh. <laughs> now, how about a glamour girl? Well, the glamour girl just just put a little pocket note. <laughs> It is incredible how you get the whole feeling in two lines. Oh, that's just great. I promised I wouldn't use the word wonderful, but that's just wonderful. In the first ep episode of Cartoonist Cafe, uh, Jim and Ed bring up Sergio Aragones, and it just made me think about him, you know, as an artist. I mean, look at these, look at these two pages. On there. I mean, he's just absolutely a master 
of the comics medium. And he, he would draw these monsters, you know, these, and, and they were always like beautiful to look at, full of details. And then these kinds of uh, full page designs, you know, with the, with the repeated color schemes, um, even the text, you know, as part of the design. Um, and so I, I started looking into him. What I found out was, um, in looking at, I guess, at his Wikipedia, he was, uh, he trained as a mime. And he trained under um, Jodorowsky, Alejandro Jodorowsky, um, from, uh, who you might know from all the Metabaron comics and from his aborted attempt to make Doom. La visión fue tremenda. I wanted to make something sacred, una película que diera las alucinaciones de LSD. Si tomara LSD to change the young mind of all the world. Michel Sidoux said to me, I want to make a new picture with you. What do you want to do? I say, Dune. And he said, yes. C'était le plus beau livre de science-fiction, si on peut la Bible de la science-fiction, un succès d'édition mondiale. I didn't read Dune, but I have a friend who said it was fantastic. Jarowski was a student of uh, Mar Marcel Marceau, the meme Marceau, who in some of my work, uh, my last documentary about the first hip hop show in the world, which was French, found out all about uh, Marcel Marceau's influence as a mime over hip hop breakdancing. Uh oh, there's Hulk Hogan knew it was going to happen with the Bernstein Bears. Well, now that's interesting because the Bernstein Bears, I think, I'm not sure. It was, I think that I, the first children's book I ever read by myself was a Bernstein Bears book. Um, they're being followed by something called the Wuzzles, the Young Astronauts, the Muppet Babies, and Monsters. I don't remember the Monsters part. And you got Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. There you go. There's something going from 2D to 3D. Right before your ever lover eyes. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, Stan Lee and Sergio Aragonis are talking about um, uh, Aragonis having been a student of uh, Marceau, of, uh, sorry, Jodorowsky's, who was the student of Marceau. And that Aragonis said he put it all into his drawing being a mime and training as a clown and being able to make people laugh and assume these different personalities that he was doing that in order to, not to become he didn't think he was going to become a performer he wanted to put it in his in his drawings which i think is a you know just incredible idea so there you go there's Gru. We've also got Stan Sakai uh, doing the calligraphy, doing the, the, the lettering. Stan Sakai, who would go on to, to, to do uh, Usagi Yojimbo, I think is the name. It's a rabbit samurai, uh, kind of in the time period when um, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird were doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So there it is, Gru the Wanderer, one of the best moments of my childhood. And I don't know enough about Sergio Aragonis, but I'd really like to find out more. My name is Joseph Cahill, Joey Cahill, for those back in the day. Joe l'extraterrestre. Uh, I turned myself into uh, extraterrestrial to make documentaries here in France. That's another story. Uh, you can uh, like and subscribe here if you, if you like this. And, uh, you know, write me back and tell me things about, uh, you know, what you think, how you think it should go. Um, give me some ideas to play with, some reactions, and um, yeah, let's, let's let's just have some fun looking at all this crazy stuff. Oh. But I've got to tell you, I have never had a better time, and I, I cannot thank you enough for being here. Sure. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, tell me. Is the mind